morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. We spend a lot of time here talking about Disney, especially lately with their copious uh, brands. And then also a Fox, who has really been making a lot of headlines with their Marvel knockoffs, as some of us feel. Although they're getting better at making a knockoff, so you can almost not tell it apart from the, uh, uh, the original, the actual one. Uh, but so today, though, I want to switch our focus over to Warner Brothers uh, and how the area where they're really shining right now. They came off of a very good 2013, as we've discussed many times, top uh, box office earner worldwide and also top Oscar earner for 2013, but I think where they're really shining right now is television. Uh, and I think that's fascinating because it just is further evidence of the blurring of the line between film and TV. Uh, and where I want to talk about today, the first two stories actually have to do with Warner Brothers television department. But we're going to start off with HBO, which uh, Warner Brothers happens to own. Now, HBO has, I think, always been someone who comes pretty close to film. It was, for a while, they were the only ones doing it. It was their calling card, their trademark. Uh, now everybody else has caught up because they had experienced such resounding success. Uh, I think largely with The Sopranos, and of course that spun off to uh, Mad Men, which HBO famously passed on uh, and so, uh, when you know um, Matthew uh, Wiener took it to them first and then they said no so then AMC had it and it showed that somebody else could succeed in this kind of prestige television programming and so then that kind of opened the Pandora you know Pandora's box and now everybody every at least every cable network and every network 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 is, is trying to have a um, prestige show that is on level, on par, pretty darn close, and sometimes some could say surpassing the stuff they have on HBO. But I think true to Game of Thrones, first of all, went very far in, you know, reinstating HBO's reputation as the premier place for great television, you know, television that is uh, almost as good as, a, as film. Uh, and some, I guess there's a case to be made these days that better than film. Uh, but I think tr True Detective uh, is something that really strengthens that because it's Game of Thrones, you know, they can point to an ensemble cast, very large budget fantasy special effects, but True Detective is a much smaller uh, in terms of scope uh, and scale project, and it just points back to good storytelling. Uh, and I think the other reason it gets a lot of attention is I think that True Detective is what won Matthew McConaughey the Oscar. I think it was brilliant to have it running while people were, the Academy members were voting, and I think they very much rewarded him for everything that he'd become in total, not just what he'd done in Dallas Buyers Club. And I agree with many people that his work in True Detective is superior to Dallas Buyers Club. And uh, it's widely believed that he is a shoe in for the Emmy. Although, I think Woody Harrelson, uh, he's getting some attention, but Woody Harrelson really shown in True Detective as well. Uh, he's always been a very, uh, you know, working actor he gets a lot of projects. He was in Now You See Me, one of the biggest surprise hits of 2013, financially uh, at least. A huge hit. They're making a sequel. And I think that True Detective shows that he really is a great actor, an underestimated actor. And I hope that this puts him a little bit back more in the spotlight. I mean, I hope they don't have to compete in the same category for the Emmy because McConaughey is taking it then. But uh, I don't see how you could classify Woody Harrelson as a supporting actor in True Detective anyway, though. So it's an unfortunate situation. It's a little bit like behind the candelabra, where it would have been nice to reward both Michael Douglas and Matt Damon, but because Douglas had the showier, uh, more transformative role, uh, even though Matt Damon's character literally transformed uh, via plastic surgery, uh, quite impressed, quite interestingly so the way they were able to depict that. But you know, Douglas got all the all the gold, all the all the medal, and Matt Damon uh, did not. So that's what is unfortunate. But we'll. See what happens with True Detective. But anyway, the reason I'm bringing this up today is there's quite a bit of speculation about who will be in the second season of True Detective. Uh, Nick Pozzolato, he is the writer, director, I mean the writer creator of this show. Uh, he said it's going to be an ongoing series, which each time, well, it's eight, this was eight episodes, they'll continue that way, uh, but we'll focus on, you know, a, se a separate set of detectives for each season in a, a certain case. Uh, so there's a lot of speculation who the new group of detectives will be. Uh, and also, uh, just on a side note, um, Nick Pozzolato, Pozzolato has said that he's going to switch up directors this time. I think True Detective benefited uh, from playing like a really long movie because it's a get executive producer, Carrie uh, Fukunaga. Fukunaga. Ah, darn it, sorry. Carrie Fukunaga. Uh, who directed uh, Jane Eyre? He's done he's done some small films. He, he had some buzz, but his career never really took off, uh, you know, on the big screen. But I think True Detective will put him back in the forefront, uh, and he can probably make whatever movie he wants. Uh, but very uh, fair, uh, Carrie. <laughs> Carrie Fukunaga, and also if you watch True Detective on HBO Go or on HBO On Demand, uh, stay, stick around for the after credits, uh, like behind the scenes look, where Pizzolatto and uh, Fukunaga talk quite a bit about their, what they, their behind the scenes thoughts on the project, and both of them are very interesting to listen to. But Carrie did the whole thing, he directed every single episode, and it gave a kind of a, uni a unified feeling. But uh, Pizzolatto is said to move forward if they want to have, stick to any kind of you know, competitive schedule, he's going to have to have 
have multiple directors. So we'll see what that does to the second season. But again, the reason this is brought up today, I know we took a roundabout path to get there, uh, but you, you'll know from the headline on this video, uh, the reason it's, such, it's in the news right now is that there's a very strong rumor that Brad Pitt is interested in doing the second season. Now, the story everybody's taking away from this online, uh, many articles are saying, it's amazing that anyone thinks Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, the definition, besides, I guess, Leonardo DiCaprio of a movie star, the two men are competing to be the, the movie star of Hollywood, would go to television, just shows that the line between film and TV is dead. Uh, and so that's why, you know, if Brad Pitt would even consider this and people would not immediately dismiss it, that's your proof right there. And I actually have to say, I don't agree with that. Uh, like they're competing to be a movie star, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio are also competing for an Oscar. Now, uh, Brad Pitt kind of won uh, this year when he took home a Best Picture Oscar and the producer, uh, you know, as a producer for 12 Years a Slave. So he's got the gold, but it's not for acting, which is what he really wants. He's been trying for quite a few years now, uh, particularly with Curious Case of Benjamin Button, uh, to some degree with Glorious Bastards, I feel, to win an acting Oscar. Uh, he has trouble sometimes even getting nominated on the board. You know, Slumdog Millionaire stole his thunder. Uh, but DiCaprio also. Uh, these two men, they, they compete for everything. It's fascinating. They compete for Oscar. They compete for box office. They compete for the same books, as you've heard me say many times. They are in bidding wars over properties. World War Z is something they bid over, and also Wolf of Wall Street. And you can see one got one and one got the other, and both were very successful for each. But uh, I think that Brad Pitt, my guess, sees the success that McConaughey has had on this show, uh, and that's why he wants to take it. He wants to show off his acting chops. And he says, look what this did for McConaughey. He got the Oscar. I'm going to take that route. Uh, and the reason I, so that's why I don't think it's that believable. I think it's not dismissive for that reason. Not that, oh, HBO is now as good as film. That's not the case. It's, a, it's like um, an actor's workshop, and I think that's what Pitt's trying to harness. And I think that he's in a certain place in his career when he's already making the big money. He's already this, on the, all the tabloids. Uh, World War Z was the biggest film he's ever made. I'm surprised he's not fast-tracking a sequel. Uh, they had signed J.A. Bayona, but as I've reported before, uh, Bayona has something else now it looks like will be his next project. But I think maybe the situation is it was such a headache to make World War Z. We had to reshoot the last third of the film. It was very bad press. It was, a, like I'm sure, an ro emotional roller coaster for Pitt. And he almost didn't make it out of it alive. I mean, the fact that he did is great. He can, you know, he can live to act another day. But still, he probably is like, you know what? I don't want to go through that again right now. Let's give it a breather, maybe. Which I think, although I have to say, is a mistake. You should strike while the iron is hot uh, before people let the negative attitude that I think still still exists on the edges from the original fandom from World War Z sinks in and kind of. Uh, poisons the good reaction some people had, a lot of people had, to World War Z. But anyway, forget all that. He's already got his box office success. Pitt wants that Oscar, which is why I think uh, he would very seriously uh, be in negotiations, perhaps, to, to do True de Detective. Now, I have to say, though, the reason I don't like this idea, and actually I would advise him against it, and if I was um, Nick uh, Pizzolatto, I would say no. I know, who would say no to Brad Pitt, but I'll tell you why. I feel it's too much like McConaughey. It is, it's basically a repeat. It's the same thing. Very similar type actors. Um, you know, what kind of characters? I mean, we all kind of know Pitt's like serious actor role where he gets kind of loopy and crazy. Uh, and he's like, I'm Brad Pitt. You think I'm all put together, but I'm willing to say anything. Uh, and it works. He, you know, he's very endearing and charming, but I can't really imagine that working in the true detective universe. Um, I would imagine him maybe, maybe he'd play like um, a criminal or something. Maybe he could be the bad guy, kind of like it uses 12 Monkeys persona. Uh, you know, his first big, serious Oscar bid. But I think that it's just too similar to what McConaughey did, a pretty boy trying to change his image. And it's going to make, I mean, I don't know. It's tough. You know, I have to say, the more I think about it as I'm talking to you here, it would be a big ratings bonanza. I think people would be very curious to see what Brad Pitt would do. And the fact that Brad Pitt was doing TV, I mean, Remember uh, the big Friends thing when he came on on the Jennifer Aniston Thanksgiving episode? That was so long ago, and I still remember it. I think a lot of people do. Uh, so, I mean, you know, Pitt is, you know, uh, you know, very, you know, potent box office audience power. I mean, look at what Angelina Jolie is doing for Maleficent, uh, I think, solely on her, her image alone. So maybe I, would say, maybe I would say yes, but I feel it's not going to work out. I feel at the end of the day... You know, while he might get critically lauded for it, I think it's going to be another near miss with an Oscar or maybe he'll get an Emmy. But I mean, come on, Pitt. You know, that's like, you know, 
McConaughey has a set. You want the set. You don't want the Emmy first. Uh, so that's, that's how I feel about it. And I'm curious how you guys feel. Do you think, true detective fans, do you think Brad Pitt would be too much like what McConaughey did in the first season? Do you want to see something drastically different? Some people said they'd like to see uh, two black actors cast or two female actors. Uh, you know, any kind of mix of race and gender. Uh, I'm curious how you guys feel. Or do you, or do you think the Pitt's such a good choice that if he is at all on the table, Pizzolatto should say yes? All right, so that's the first story of the day. Uh, the second story, as I said, two TV stories today from Warner Brothers. And I just really, a number of people have been asking me about it. I'm bringing up the pictures I want to reference here. Uh, people have been asking me, how do I feel about the Gotham TV show that Fox is putting together? And a lot of set photos have been leaking over the past week or so. And I have to say, I'm really excited about this. I'm more excited about this television show, this comic book television show, than I have been for any comic book television show to date. I'm extremely impressed. I'm not, I'm not a Walking Dead fan, I have to preface that. Uh, but I, I have to say, the way this is coming together looks so amazing and so well done that I'm beginning to think that I wish it is part of uh, the DC Cinematic Universe because I really am impressed with what it looks like, the quality of what they're doing here, and how seriously they seem to be taking it. Uh, and it seems for once to, you know, trying to take risks, it reminds me a little bit of uh, the Earth One Batman story that I really championed when it came out. Uh, Jeff Johns, I feel, is really, you know, um, iffy these days. I mean, sometimes he delivers and sometimes he really doesn't. But this Earth One, the way he reimagined Batman, I thought was very impressive. And I, and I, I see elements from that taken here uh, and, and for the series. But let's go, let's get into it. I'll try, and show you, I'll try and show you some of the pictures that have come out. I know a lot of you have been appreciating when I've been including pictures, so let's try and do that today. But I think this show just looks so good. Uh, I'm actually even more excited about it than I am for any DC movie. I think that the way this is coming together is super impressive. All right, so of course the show focuses on Jim Gordon. Now we haven't had an official poster shot or you know a, a studio publicity shot for Gordon, but we've seen uh, him running around. Ben McKenzie from Southland. I think he was very good on Southland, where he played uh, uh, an officer, a police, LAPD police officer. Now he's a detective here. It's Jim Gordon. Uh, he's no Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. I loved Gary Oldman's look in the Nolan films, but we have to we have to move on. And I think that Brett McKenzie is a very likable. Actor, and I think I'm curious to see what he does with Jim Gordon. I mean, he, he looks the least like he's transformed, uh, and you know, he doesn't have the stash, he's not rocking the stash, which is such a crucial part of Jim Gordon. I'm surprised they didn't make him glue one on. I would have made him glue one on. But I still like the way it looks. I think I like the blue suit. I think that looks really good. Uh, it's a nice, crisp look, but still being professional. Uh, and I really like, and I like the way the sets are looking when you see uh, Ben McKenzie in action. I think it looks appropriately Gotham like. Uh, now, the other sets of photos we've come out, when those first McKenzie photos leaked, we got our first look at the Penguin. And I think this is a wonderful choice. He looks instantly like when you say, oh, that's the Penguin. You're like, it is the Penguin. I can totally see what you're talking about. Uh, yet I feel that it's it's more believable. You know, often they they do the Penguin as some disfigured person. This like almost, you know, he has like a beak-like nose. He's, you know, very usually very portly. Uh, and it looks, you know, it's hard, you know, it's like, how can you not think that guy was a master, you know, criminal? He looks ridiculous. He, how can he function in normal society? But this Penguin carries over that bird-like quality, uh, but you know, in a way that he can obviously, you know, be a part of society and, you know, uh, is cooler, you know, he's a more cool character. You know, often the penguin bleats and runs around and runs for his umbrella and you're like, could we not really do better than this villain? I mean, I think that's why he's never really caught on. But this guy looks great. I'm very excited about this. All right, then the next photo that started to come out, uh, we got a look at Harvey Bullock. Now, I wish they had done what they did with the Earth One, uh, with Batman, with Jeff Johns, had Harvey Bullock be like this former uh, TV detective. And he was like a pretty boy. And I thought that was really interesting. And it showed that first uh, year how the job broke him. And I thought that was really fascinating. But uh, Donald Logue is a great actor. I really like him a lot. Uh, they have some pictures here. They did have an official shot of him. I think he looks very good. Again, I'm glad they, you know, again, these all are good nods to the original characters, but they're very believable. It's like crossing over what Nolan did with, well, with the comic book uh, image. Because he's definitely Harvey Bullock, but he's not like eating a donut and being all sloppy. You know, it's not playing into that stereotype. It's, you know, a little bit more serious. And I think he'll be, I think this is also, I think he'll be great in the role. And I, I like his trench coat. It's like a leather trench coat, it looks like. It's really cool. Uh, the other, then, then the Selena Kyle photos came out. Uh, I, I like the suit a lot. I like that they're referencing the Ed Brubaker, uh, you know, uh, Darwin Cook design suit. Well, Darwin Cook designed it, but Ed Brubaker, I think, did a lot to make that character really stick, that version of Catwoman, which I missed 
incredibly in the comics. Uh, but she looks, I think the suit looks fantastic. I think it's a little silly she's stealing some milk, but I'll give it a chance. Uh, but I think she looks really good. She looks really good in action. Although I have to say, she's supposed to be someone just a few years older than Bruce Wayne, someone who's a teenager. But the actress they've chosen, I don't know if it's she just looks older as an actress or if it's the makeup they're putting on her, but she looks like a full-fledged tiny adult to me. So... Uh, I think I have mixed feelings about that, but she looks like she's doing a good job in the role. She looks like she's doing, she's not voguing while she does these action sequences, at least so far from these stills. So I think that's very promising. So the way she looks good and the costume looks good to the point where I'm like, okay, maybe I will accept a younger Selena Kyle. Also, young Bruce Wayne. They have some photos leak of him, at least him hanging out with this girl on set. Uh, and I think he looks, you know, he looks pretty good. I'm not saying I'm not like, yo, oh, look, that's young Ben Affleck. But I, I do think he looks good again. And I think it looks like he's enjoying the role and he's really into being Batman, not just being on TV, uh, which often a lot of actors are like, well, I don't really think I want to be known as Batman forever, but whatever, this is the role I got offered. Then uh, the other thing that came out that really spurred me to finally talk about this is the Alfred Pennyworth picture that broke just a day or so ago. I love this. It's absolutely fantastic. It had, he has the strength, the inner strength of a military man, but you can see the warmth in his face and his eyes of someone who's loving caretaker to Master Bruce uh, and of the Wayne family originally. I really think that they were able to toughen up Alfred here without losing his heart and soul. Now, they're going with the ex-military background that was uh, introduced by Jeff Johns in this Earth One storyline. I think it's a really good idea. I think it's a great way to re-energize the Alfred Pennyworth character, make him a little bit more um, integral to Bruce Wayne operation. I hope this doesn't take away from Bruce Wayne's eventual journey around the globe to learn from others. I would much rather he be trained uh, by Alfred than Ra's al Ghul. I'm not a big fan of that uh, connection so much. I think it kind of comes from the comics, but I prefer I prefer the uh, animated series one where he just went and found different masters all over the world, and he is the one who put together the set of skills. He didn't just take someone else's set of skills they'd already assembled. It was Bruce Wayne's you know, idea to become Batman by taking these skills that people normally wouldn't think to put together and creating a super, a super individual. I was going to say Superman, uh, a super, you know, uh, a vigilante. Uh, so I think that, that I like that um, that storyline a lot, and so I would hate to see him have to be like, you know, Alfred just taught me everything. I don't want to lose that. Uh, but I, I do like this um, military look. I think that the fact that they're including it here as well means for sure that it will probably be included with Jeremy Irons, Alfred, in this Batman versus Superman. And I think that that makes sense when you can. Jeremy Irons has a very cold uh, aspect to him, and I think that if you weren't going to have a military aspect, I think he'd actually not be a very good Alfred. But I think it works with the military angle. So I just love this Alfred, and I wonder if perhaps we will see the beginnings of Bruce Wayne's training. And perhaps Alfred at least starts him on, the, on that path and helps maybe even push him in that direction. That would be a very strong choice. And so I don't know how I would feel about it, but the fact that I trust that what I'm seeing so much so far that I'm open to that idea, I think says a lot. Now, the last big character we haven't really seen yet is Jada Pinkett Smith, who is playing like a mob boss. I think this is great. I'm very excited about having uh, a female character and uh, a black character. Uh, I don't like it when they, you know, I think it's, I, I hope to, I would like to see more black and female characters. You know, you don't want just like a, it's a double token, but the character sounds so interesting and integral to the plot that I'm very excited about it. I'm not a big Jada Pinkett Smith fan. Uh, not at all, actually. But still, I think this is such a great opportunity of a role, and I'm excited about it as a female viewer and a comic book viewer that I'm I'm rooting for her. So I hope that I'm pleasantly surprised. But it'll, I, and it'll be interesting. You know, right now, Selena Kyle in the comics has been turned into a, a mob boss. So it's interesting to maybe see them build on that a little bit here with a new character. And the character does well enough, a la Harley Quinn, maybe we'll see her introduced into the Bat universe, which she could certainly use. Uh, it has a lot of female characters. It has a lot of, um, you know, it has a, a, a gay and les a lesbian character with Batwoman. By the way, Batwoman has the military background, so by giving that to Bruce Wayne, I wanted to mention that, by giving that to Bruce Wayne through Alfred, I wonder if it takes away from Batwoman at all, because I did like her military background and how because of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, she had to leave the military, and being a vigilante was how she was able to still contribute to society through with her skill set. I really liked that. I thought that was a great story. Uh, but I think that there's not a lot of color in the Bat universe. Uh, there's Lucius Fox, which who they're trying to bring back more, but not so much. All right, so let's go to the third. I mean, it's not working so well, and I think Batwing never really took off, uh, which is unfortunate. I, I like Batwing, uh, especially when uh, Judd Winnick was writing it. I thought that was pretty good. All right, so let's go over. Uh, let's. So Warner Brothers is doing a very nice job. The third story, also Warner Brothers, back to their movie division in DC. Uh, yesterday, uh, or the, uh, just a few days ago, but it made the rounds yesterday in the news. Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, someone tweeted him and they said, are you going to work with DC? I really wish you would work with DC. And Dwayne 
Dwayne Johnson, ever the self-promoter, he's a real Barnum and Bailey there, said, myself and DC, he tweeted this, myself and DC have agreed on a character, dot dot, extremely complex, I like how on Twitter there's not room for the traditional three dot dots. <laughs> Extremely, but he put a space in there. Rock, you gotta work on your tweeting. Extremely complex, well known, parentheses, but never played, and a pure badass mofo. He did the MF abbreviation. And then he put a little winky face. I love it. Uh, so that's what he said. Uh, and everybody immediately pounced on this and they were like, it's, it's gotta be Lobo. And I would have to say, who else could it be? Who else is a badass character that's never been played? I mean, uh, so my guess would be Lobo. However, I wouldn't Lobo. I wouldn't put it past The Rock, though, to be trying to already get people excited about maybe he's not such a badass character that he's hoping to make badass. He's like, if The Rock says he's badass, he's badass. Because I think there's a chance you can play Cyborg. I think Cyborg really needs a strong casting choice to work. That is a very difficult character. Uh, so I'm also, I could see him as Jon Stewart, but Jon Stewart isn't, I mean, he's a... Uh, I don't know. I think Jon Stewart has so much self-control that I, I still feel that Denzel Washington would be a pretty good choice for that. I feel The Rock is a little bit too much of a showman for Jon Stewart, who has an inner core, an inner strength, uh, which I think is really important to his character. Uh, so The Rock, if it's Lobo, I don't know how that's going to work in the, uh, in the DC cinematic universe they're putting together. Will he be a villain in the Justice League movie that they have coming up? I don't know. Maybe he'll be an after credits surprise at Batman vs. Superman. But I, maybe he'll show up to Earth in Batman vs. Superman, being like, I have a, there's a bounty on, uh, you know, Kal-El's head. So who knows? I'm not sure. But I feel, I would actually prefer The Rock to maybe play Cyborg, because I feel Lobo is so much like everything else he's ever done. I mean, what is Lobo but a wrestling uh, persona, right? A world wrestling entertainment persona. I, I mean, I guess that's The Rock's wheelhouse, but I feel it wouldn't be a step forward for him so much. I think The Rock would, I mean, although some people, when they watched the Hercules trailer yesterday, felt that The Rock was incapable of taking a step forward, that he was as high as he could go, and was actually a detriment to that trailer because of his lack of acting ability. And some people feel, feel he didn't look the role. I love that trailer. You can check out my trailer review. I'll put a link at the end of the episode. But uh, who do you want to see The Rock play? Do you want Want him to see to see him play Lobo? Would you rather see him make Cyborg badass, uh, or do you think The Rock maybe should go over to DC? Is that where I mean to Marvel? Is that where all the action is? Is there maybe just not a character for him? Uh, also, maybe he could play. You know, now that I think about it, he could play Steel. Uh, but you know, that's like Mark Wahlberg being an inventor over in Transformers. Can Dwayne Johnson uh, sell? Uh, you know, the Henry Irons persona of someone who is a scientist. All right, so those are the three stories of the day. The question of, is, as I said, all Warner Brothers. So the question comes from Pengu2 Craft, and he says, Dear Grace, how are you? Smiling face. I am great. Glad to hear it. Tomorrow, the 26th, is my birthday. Happy birthday, Linus. He signs his name here. So here's my question. With the Muppet sequel and Sesame Street, what do you think of Jim Henson's other show, Fraggle Rock? And do you think they could have a movie also? Do you think the Muppets will have a third? And also, do you think the Muppets will have a third movie? Thanks a lot. Well, again, happy birthday, Linus. Are you going to see the Muppets Most Wanted for your birthday? Have you seen it yet? Uh, I think this question came about because I discussed on Movie Math that the, uh, the Muppets have not did not do very well. The Muppets Most Wanted. It was a huge underperformer, half of what the Muppets took in on its first weekend in 2011. And so I think the third Muppets film probably is called into question at this point. Uh, either it's going to have a major overhaul. Uh, it, Either they'll do that, or they'll put it on hold for a while, or they'll just completely put the franchise to sleep. Or maybe they'll turn their attention to TV. For instance, they are working on a Fraggle Rock Doozer animated television series. I forget what channel it's on, but I've seen some promos for it. Uh, and I, it's computer animated. It looks like it's a good learning lesson because the Doozers like to build. Uh, however, I have to say, I actually wrote a Fraggle Rock comic, so I had to do a lot of Fraggle Rock research, and my Doozer, the Doozers were my favorite. And I think when you take away the puppet aspect and their cute little felt fuzzy bodies uh, that you just want to squeeze and, like, rub, um, I think that they don't work as well. I think the Doozers are so great because they're just so cute and adorable as puppets. So, but we'll see how the television show does. Will there be a Fraggle Rock movie? Um, I don't know if they'll ever do a Fraggle Rock movie. I think that that's too small of a franchise. I think TV is a good place for it. Uh, and the Fraggle Rock, Fraggle Rock was for a pretty young audience. Uh, it was difficult. It had some. It was. It was a weird show to write for. Uh, a comic for it was very difficult because it had both like preschool lessons, but it had to appeal to adults and its wit. So that was a huge. You know, that was two demographics that were so far apart, like a football field apart, that finding a story that pleased both was extremely difficult. It's actually the hardest thing I've ever had to write for in terms of a licensed property. Uh, but I don't see them going to movies. And as far as television show, I mean, a, a movie goes for uh, Sesame Street. I don't think that's going. To, I don't think that's going to happen either. And as far as the Muppets go, 
I really do think that if I were Disney with this poor showing, I would either, uh, make, as I said, do a major overhaul with much better cast members. All due respect to Tina Fey, Ricky Gervais, and Ty Burrell, who did a very good job in the movie. They just can't pull people into the theater, as it's very clear at this point. So they need a movie star. Um, and they get a slew of them on Sesame Street. They should be like, they should have a Muppet Disney executive in the green room being like, hey, you having fun? You know what else you could do for like a full week or so? But I just think, uh, I think The Muppets is, I, I think the first film, 2011, might have been uh, a, a success as a result of nostalgia, and that nostalgia, that itch has been scratched. And I think younger audiences just aren't into this. I mean, it's hard enough to convince them to watch 2D animation. I think puppets are a really tough sell these days. And I've, I myself, when I saw the movie, and a number of people in, uh, I've been hearing report online, uh, kids were really bored in this movie. Some of you uh, BTT viewers have said you took your own children and they were not having a good time. And I'm curious how many of you have even seen Muppets Most Wanted. I, I just think that the puppets are maybe just too antiquated at this point. Which is sad and unfortunate. Uh, it really, but I think, and you know, they tried to do a Muppet show, uh, even bring that back to television on ABC, and that didn't work. So I really do feel, sadly, to some degree, I think the Muppets' time has passed, uh, at least in anything that's a high risk market. So maybe they can come up with a cheap television show, maybe on like an IFC, maybe that could work. Actually, it might not be a bad idea. But does Disney own? I mean, it's a Disney property; it has to go to a low rent. Disney, uh, you know, place, and I don't know if they have anything that has, like, that kind of hipster, hipster street cred, you know, they can put on ABC Family, although ABC Family gets pretty edgy, by the way, uh, I don't know if you heard that story about, they wanted to do a, a story about uh, Alice in Arabia, about a girl who's kidnapped by her Saudi Arabian relatives and forced to wear a veil uh, in, in Saudi Arabia and has to figure out how to escape, yet also come to appreciate the culture there, it was such a ridiculous idea, and thankfully it was shut down by, I believe, um, uh, Middle Eastern, uh, you know, league that looks out for how Middle Eastern characters are depicted in uh, entertainment. But anyway, thank you for your question, Linus. I'm sorry I'm the bearer of not great news on your birthday, but again, I hope you have a great day. Muppets Most Wanted does have its moments. Great soundtrack. And uh, I wonder, are you having a Muppet-themed birthday? Uh, have a great day. I hope you got a great gift and have a good time, whatever you do. And thank you to everybody who tuned in. Uh, and you can check out some more episodes right now.